Good morning and welcome to another online message here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Rita and our senior pastors here at our church. And I'm so glad that you're able to join us this morning. Uh, we are so blessed. This uh, past Friday, we got to have a night of prayer. And got to pray over a bunch of needs and lift people up. And, and we placed them before Jesus. So, you know, like the man with palsy that, you know, Jesus saw, their, saw his friend's faith. And we just believe God that he saw our faith for our friends uh, on Friday and, and just to be a blessing. So we're glad we're fired up about it and excited about what the great reports is going to be coming out of that. Um, we're going to pray and then we're going to just enter into the word uh, this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I just praise you and thank you, Lord God, for or just giving us a word today in due season. Thank you, Father, that we just keep our hearts set on you and planted before you. I pray, Lord Jesus, that I decrease you increase. Give us all ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, when we talk about faith, the anti-venom to fear, and I, I'm just one of those people, I just can't do fear. Fear is just, I don't like the feeling. I don't like being a part of it. I don't like what it does. And, and, and you know, fear is just not a thing I can live with. God can remove the poison of fear. So one thing, it's one thing to be afraid of something at a moment, but then fear is one of those things that if it get a, get a chance to last, it can infect your entire lifestyle, infect your entire body and your mind and, and, and begin to kind of pursue in a way that it damages everything you believe in. I, I believe this is all my heart that there are a lot of unfulfilled dreams in the grave with people who were too afraid to step out. And maybe they were... Uh, told at one point that they weren't good enough. Maybe they were denied. It was, whatever it may be, it, it led to a fear to not stepping out and doing what they were capable of doing. So in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 through 18, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we, we may have uh, boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And so again, we're especially we're in a time now where everything's against the gospel, everything's against Christ. You speak up about Jesus, you speak about the Bible, you're called a racist or a, a, a whatever, a phobia, whatever they try to label on you, but we must speak the truth. It is it is better to be bold now so you can be bold before God. Because if you're afraid now, you're gonna be afraid to stand before God. So it's better to stand up and say, I'm gonna speak what God has called me to speak. I'm gonna speak what the word of God says. And that way, in the day of judgment, I know I can be bold because I boldly stood for God. Because it is the truth. It is not just standing there just to say I'm right and you're wrong. It's standing there to say, I love you. There's a perfect love. The reason why I'm not afraid of what you'll think about me, and I'm not afraid if you cancel me, because because my love is perfect through God. Not that I'm perfect, but there's a perfect love that I'm sharing with you. I'm telling you the truth because there's a love that shares. I have a, I have a good friend of mine from our church, uh, Chris Contreras. Chris Chris, probably one of the most honest people that, that I know that could say something and it just scare you how honest he is. But it's such a powerful thing that the strength of his honesty and integrity, and I, I believe that's what God has called a lot of us to do, is just be, not a lot of us, all of us to do this, be honest, be upfront, be strong with that honesty, be, be courageous with it. And and, and I, I think that that is one of the things that is holding the gust back in the gospel. I pray for the fire of God in our belly to be able to speak up and stand up and say, no, that is not what the Bible says. I don't believe that. I don't care what the culture is going. I don't care what everyone else is saying. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm, I'm not here for that. What I am here for is to tell you about there's a loving God who sent his only begotten son to die for you and to see if he's safe. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't fear. Don't doubt. Don't be afraid to stand out and be who God made you to be. So fear, the side effect of fear is spiritual illness that will take away our mental capacity and lead to physical destruction. There's a, there's a, there's a spiritual illness. And, you know, we hear so much about mental illness and mental, but I, I believe one, we're missing a spiritual illness. There's a spiritual illness that is missing out on people that their spirit is sick. Um, it, you know, there's, there's a proverb that says that don't let your heart grow sick. You know, that, that hope deferred it makes your heart sick. And so there's this thing where, where the sickness, the spiritual illness begin to take over, where people begin to give up, people begin to quit. Think about where we are in this world or even in our lives, that what is making us not have a heart or desire to move forward? I believe this, the spirit has become sick. Your spirit has become ill. The Bible calls it quenching the spirit. Is basically suffocating 
what needs to live and be alive in you and pushing it down when you know truth, but you push the truth down when you know right and you push the right down when you know good, but you push the good down and then you call what is not good evil. You stack on top of it. And so we don't want the spiritual illness because ultimately that's going to get to mental illness. It's going to get to physical destruction. Uh, Satan has limited power and we need to know that his power is limited and, and, and he needs help from his prey to accomplish his goals to destroy their life. He's got to have your help. And the way he gets your help is to get to you through your belief. He knows he can't go to heaven, so he wants to distract and get you to disbelieve in what God has said and what heaven is really about. So he goes after that way. And I, 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 I like, I like again, I'm a Nat Geo Wild person. I'm like nature person. And I, I watch the, the, the lions, the way they hunt, and they hunt in packs. And what they do is they create a fear. They create a panic. And they cause even the weaker one or slower one to run in direction. Well, if they didn't panic, if the buffalo, which I don't understand why buffalo get beat up by lions anyway, but if they didn't panic, there would not be a weak one to identify. If they did not fear, there would not be an exposing of a weaker one. That if they stood together and they trust standing together, that there wouldn't be anything for the lions to attack and they faced them if they stood and had each other's back. Yet they run to take care of themselves. And we got to think about the fact of what are we running to take care of? We saw that in a pandemic that more people are willing to take care of themselves than to take care of what God has said and what God has spoken. And so part of that in the sense of when I'm running to take care of me, I can't be doing what God's will is. Now, again, we understand about self-care. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when God is speaking and saying to go and step out and I'm going to be your protector. I'm going to cover you. That's where we have to release and let God be our covering. The, the, this, is, this is why we, we, you know, we, he went after God's character to Eve. When we talk about Satan, he goes after the character of God. So really, he's after the belief of people. People are struggling. I don't believe in a God, and I don't believe there's a God. And if I do believe in a God, I don't believe that he wants us to live a certain way. And I don't believe that the God that's, that I believe in would want me uh, to not have as much fun and do whatever I want to do. Well, that's, that's, not, that's, that's not God. That, that's a club. And, you know, uh, what God is saying, I sent my only begotten son because I love you. I sent my only begotten son because I want you to know the truth because I know truth will set you free. I know truth will make your day better, make your life better, and it will remove you from fear. So, but Satan uses this. So he, he goes after God's character to Eve and he is still doing it today because he knows that faith in God's word will render him powerless. Well, how do he get a hold of people's faith? He first will have to get them to get away from the word of God. If I can get them away from the word of God, we understand Gen, uh, John 1, 1, Jesus is the word, I basically get them away from God. And so when they start to be a struggle, if there start to be a questioning of what the Bible says and said, well, that's not for today, that's absolutely not true. Eternity has no set day. Eternity is that forever. And it always will be. And so he comes in and he wants to set it because he knows when you use your faith, he is powerless, completely powerless. Fear can rob us of our strength to maintain boldness in moments so that it can hold a threat over us in the day of judgment for not obeying God because we were afraid. So the whole thing is to create a fear so that he can create a threat. If he can get you afraid to believe in God, he can threaten you of being ashamed of God. If he can threaten you to be ashamed of God. He can threaten that you don't ever, you don't, you don't love God, that you never love God, and you're really not saved. You're not born again. But what you have to do is turn and say, I do love God. I did get caught up for the moment, but I'm not caught up anymore. I'm going to use my faith for my God loves me, and I haven't given up on him, and I shall live by faith. And you begin to rejoice in what God has done in your life and begin to speak that into existence of what you are. And so that is where your belief begins to come from. That's the boldness that begins to come out. And so the day of judgment will never be able to catch you off guard because you stood when you were in a day of judgment by other people. It'd rather be to be judged by man than to be judged by God. Fear leads to unbelief, and complaining is the language of unbelief. Now, here's how it works, right? Here's the Bible. Here's what it says. You know, uh, re refrain from sex before marriage. You, you wait until you get married. Here's here's the fear part. Fear is like, well, I don't believe that. That's what you hear. Well, I don't believe God doesn't want me out and partying. I don't believe that God doesn't want me out getting high. I don't believe that God doesn't want me out running around. God, I don't believe that. Well, fear is if fear is leads to unbelief. And, and complaining is the language. When you start to speak the language, when you start to communicate with unbelief, 
it starts to pull you away from God. It is the one thing is not believing God. It's right denying Christ. Here is this in 1 Peter chapter 5 in verse 6 through 8. It says this, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, God has lined us up in a specific way of his word to obey his word. And, and not only that, when we get a hold of obeying the word of God, these are the things and structures right? We don't live in fear to obey God's word. We don't feel like we're missing out on a, on anything. So then God begins to build us up in the job that we do. He begins to promote us throughout what we're doing because of the obedience to his word. He can promote us and give us that strength and boldness and jobs. When you watch uh, as a fear of the word and a fear of the gospel and a fear of obeying God because of what people may think will cause there to be fear in other areas of life. When fear goes unchecked, it will cause intoxication from the surroundings that will keep keep sober thinking about the power of God to be forgotten. Now, it keeps you from doing sober thinking, right? The Bible says to be sober. Be sober. There's fear. You've been enough panic. You've seen people. There's so much anxiety medicine out there because people are intoxicated with anxiety. They are intoxicated with fear. We watched during the pandemic, people are grabbing the mask and putting them all over their face. And now all the people who told people to wear masks, they, they're, they're saying the mask didn't do anything and never should have had them wearing it. But now they've created a fear. Now they've started something that people still wear them, even knowing what the same medical people said to wear them are saying that they never even matter. But you've created a fear now. And now that you got a fear, you got people wearing them in a sense that they believe that they're protecting themselves, even though they said it really doesn't do anything. So you got to go, whose word are they believing? Were they right when they said to wear them? Or are they right when they said not to wear them? Which one are you going to believe? Well, here's the what you should believe, the report of the Lord. Whose report should believe? As I said on, on Wednesday, true or true? True or true. This, these are the things that I need to run. The report of the Lord. The verse opens with humble under God, but fear wants you to be hidden under problems. You're either going to humble yourself under God or you're going to be hidden under the problems. The Casting our cares means that we trust that God knows how to care for us better than we know how to care for ourselves. Simple. Simple, God's the potter, we're the clay. He knows the shape. He knows what we can hold. He knows what we can contain. He holds us together. Fear, fear signals to the enemy who is available to be taken. So he says, the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for availability. He's looking for those who are walking around questioning what God has already said. Well, once the questioning starts, the doubt and unbelief already starts to kick in and set in because I can't believe what I don't believe. I can't believe what I'm starting to question. So God knows how to care for us better than we know how to care for ourselves. Pray with intentionality. You need to pray with a purpose. That's I loved about Friday. Man. We were in there praying with a purpose, with a plan, with boldness. And not as someone guessing about the power of God. Like a roaring lion. So think about this. The Bible says the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. For Christians, Satan is a lion who may roar, but has been defanged at the cross. At the cross in Colossians 2, 15, Jesus has stripped him of all of his powers, stripped, stripped him of his claws, stripped him of his teeth. He's got nothing. He's a roaring, toothless, clawless lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. Yet the sound of his roar, his deceptive lies are still potent that he has the power to devour souls and rob Christians of affections. Now listen to this, right? He can't do anything but yell. If you make a lot of noise, what you hear the noise, let's, let's pick a noise. If you stand up against some of this cultural stuff, especially this sexual stuff, then you're called a, a, a phobia, one of the phobias, transphobia, whatever. And it's a roar to say, see, you're you're unqualified to be in humanity. You're un It's a roar. You are plenty qualified. You have a faith, you have a belief, and that's what you're standing up and believing. But the roar is the goal to get you to run in the wrong direction. Like I said before about the lions and the pride, they roar, they scream, they create a panic. Don't you panic. You stick with God. Psalms 91.3 suggests that Satan may come against us like a fowler, 
a one who captures birds. The fowler is always quiet and secretive, never wanting to reveal his presence. So again, we get the two uh, the way. He comes he roaring, and then he comes sneaking. He slithers up on Eve. He roars in other times to try to make a scene. And this is where we got to look. A lot of my uh, white brothers and sisters in, in Christ are afraid to, to speak about what they believe because the, the first word, oh, you're racist. No, I'm just, here's my belief. Here's where I'm standing on the gospel. What does that got to do with color when I'm telling you about the gospel? And again, it's sneaky. It's, it's, it. it's, it's a shutdown. Let me shut you down. Let me cancel you out. And you have to begin, you cannot be afraid to speak up about what you believe when you're speaking the word of God. Second Corinthians uh, 11 and 14 tells us that Satan can come as an angel of light, appearing glorious, good and attractive. And, and we've seen this where churches are starting to believe in the things that are totally against the Bible, starting to believe in the, the uh, LGBTQ and, and believe in the ungodliness and, and cursing and, and sleeping around and, and all kind of just stuff that's ungodly. And they're trying to say that that's okay because they've bit off of it before. And in that little bit of fear had now become a nature, a natural thing that now that's part of their attraction. That's part of their daily habit. And they're trying to preach that as an angel of light. We can't afford, uh, we can't afford fear because when everything, when everything seems to be pointed to, point to evil winning, we must remember it is just a roar and the hand of God is more powerful. We got to be able to do that. And we remember seeing this too, as, as youth pastors, we had some people, several, several uh, people leave our church because of what we were preaching. And they said, well, but this over here, they preach that we can drink, we can get high, we can get drunk, we can do whatever we want to do. And I'm telling you, that's not godly. That's not godly. That is not right. That is not biblical. But because they were preaching what itches and they were preaching what, what, what someone wanted to hear, they were an angel of light that they wanted, right? And the truth was pushed to the side. You still have to stick with it. We didn't change our message and we won't. We're going to stick with the Bible. We want to be able to say, here it is, like Jesus said to Satan, it is written. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 through 4, it says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtleties, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if, if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Oh, well, and that's clear. There, there it is. Paul says, Look, the way the serpent got a hold of Eve was he just, he talked about God, but he just talked about him in another way. We pray only to Jesus. We pray only to God. If, you know, even Peter said that don't bow to me. I am but a man. Only Christ is to be bowed to. So we don't go to anything other than Jesus. If they preach another Christ, if they preach anything else outside of the word of God, that's another gospel. That's another Jesus. That is not the Christ. Get away from it. Get away from it. It is not the gospel. And again, as I said earlier, there are people actually out there teaching this, teaching it in a way of popularity, teaching a way to keep their crowd. But man, to stand before God and for him to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And just because you can say, Lord, Lord, God, God doesn't mean they're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. But if you worked iniquity, if you worked the lie and called the lie and worked on the lie and kept the lie and justified the lie, that's a working of iniquity. You don't want to do that. Fear robs us of clarity and makes things that God made perfectly seem, uh, make perfectly clear seem impossible to believe. Simple is God, simple is God said, and that simple as this, God said it, that settles it. Whether it fits our feelings or not, it is written just like Jesus told the devil. Use the KISS method, right? And I know it's a rude way in the, in the secular world, but the KISS method I want to use here is called Keep It Simple Saints. Quit making it hard. Fear makes things hard. Well, it's okay to listen to this or it's okay to have this in there. Now you're making it hard when God says, here's the simple truth. Uh, be holy as I am holy. Walk in righteousness. Walk in the peace of God. Another gospel is anything that doesn't line up with the word of God. And there is plenty out now pursuing being like over speaking the will of God. In Proverbs chapter three and verse five uh, through seven, it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart 
and lean not onto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now, I believe this. Now, professionally, I want to speak to you in this way. Get a hold of your spirit. Get a hold of your faith. Professionally, God is calling you to move forward. That's going to be a generational change of, of you walking in a, in a way that, that's never been seen before for your family. Your family is going to walk in a boldness, walk in a clarity, walk in an obedience, walk in an abundance like never before because you're getting a hold of a clarity that God is bringing to you. But that means you cannot lean on your own understanding. You may understand that someone told you that you were unqualified. You may understand that someone told you that you were incapable of learning. You may understand that someone told you there are better people at what you do than you, but they are not you. God has called you to be something specific. God has called you to be something blessed. He's called you that way because he needs you to lean on him to get there. There are times that I am speaking to crowds of people that the spirit of God will come on me and begin to speak through me. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I have no control. Surrender. God will say it and it'll be the best time ever that you begin to see. He wants to do these great things in you. But when you start to let fear impact it will begin to unpack and live in your life forever. Fear dehydrates trust and redirects our lean on what we can do over what God has already done. It redirects our lean instead of leaning on God. We're dehydrated. Now we're leaning on us. Now we're leaning on what we can do. We're leaning on what we can feel. And Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me. I'll give him water that flows that he'll never thirst again. God created us and has the best wisdom for our life. Satan knows now, he knows that if he can get us to just start leaning like Eve, it will be just a matter of time before it turns into a spirit that is not from God. If we start leaning like Eve, we'll start learning to leave God. 2 Timothy 1.7 talks about it, that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Now, it's one thing to be afraid and not stand up to the gospel, but if you stay afraid long enough, it'll turn into your spirit. It'll be your nature to be afraid. It'll be your nature to question who God is. It'll be your nature to play savior. When God is sent, fear not. Don't let get that poison out of you. If fear increases the size of the enemy mentally and causes hope to shrivel up and die, Faith inflates our trust in God and ignites the belief that nothing is impossible with God. Giants cannot destroy you. Being afraid of giants is what will destroy you. Have faith over everything. Have it. Have it over everything. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I break the spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety. I come against the Lord God, the mind that is uh, arresting people from abilities. There are great people that have sat on the side because they've been arrested by their mind. I thank you, Father, for shackles falling off of them in the name of Jesus, that the power of God, the power of trust, relieves them from their duty of fear. I thank you for blessing them. I thank you for strengthening the body of Christ that we come out bold and courageous to do your will. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love to see you in person. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.